we have about 130 employees. We have uh, 100 airports worldwide using our system. We have more than 200 retail integrators which are installing these devices worldwide. More than 200,000 sensors are installed uh, in different shops all over the world. Um, so it was a big, a big scale up of the company, it was a challenge in the past. It's really important that the technology was supporting that, that the, 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 the solution actually supported us in growing uh, the company. So ease of use of the technology is a key not only for the customer but as well for the company to grow. So if you, have, if you spend hours and hours and hours in deploying a system, you cannot grow. You need too much people, you need, it's too much cost actually. Um, so it was also important that one part of the development was focusing on scalability, on usable and fast deployment of the technology. In a post-pandemic world, we believe that our technology will be more important in smart offices, for example, where um, office usage will be way more flexible and it's going to be important to understand the utilization of different spaces in the office. In retail spaces, retailers need to rethink themselves to to be able to, to cope with the increased demand in, in online shopping and to really provide a customer experience in those stores. So even in a post-pandemic world, we believe the demand for people flow technology and for our sensors is growing. That's why we need to be able to support our partners in, in deploying those technologies. The biggest project we have so far, it's, um, it's in Paris. They have um, over the two airports in Paris deployed um, several thousand sensors where we cover um, all the, the, the main um, touch points for, for passenger journey like um, check-in and um, passport control, security control and many others. Digitizing the analog world, learning what's going on, having the insights, when do people arrive, how long are they in the queue, do they change between the queues, actually what's going on. We just realized the wait times were so long that people left the queue to go to the toilet and they came back, joined the wrong queue. And like that, you, you, you get kind of a mess. And this is the insights we can provide to the airport to increase passenger experience and, and get better, um, better management of the, of, the, of the situation. Data in itself is really important, but it's really about what you make out of this data. So it's about how you create information out of this data. That can be things like detecting whether someone is wearing a mask, whether someone is a women or a man. It can be about detecting whether someone is part of a group or not. And then once you have this information, it starts really getting interesting. Once you have this information over, let's say, the course of a week or over the course of a month, you can start seeing patterns. Maybe you see for a store that during the week there's more families that are, that are going to a shop and during the weekends it's more individuals, men or women, or the other way around. And once you start understanding these patterns, you really understand what, what, how a store is functioning. So you get really in-depth knowledge of a store. And it's then based on this knowledge that you can start optimizing customer experience. So for instance, if you understand that during the weekends it's mostly families, then you can start tailoring the customer experience to families. And I think then this knowledge is really the, the breeding ground for, for actual insights that allow you to act upon this insight. So for instance, then you may start seeing that as we've heard the example before, that some fitting rooms are being overused, that there's queues, and then you see that the conversion rate drops, and then you can start acting on that. So then you can maybe provide some pop-up fitting rooms, and then you see that the conversion, room, the conversion rate increases. You do that for a while, and after a while maybe you realize, oh wait, now it's not the number of, of fitting rooms anymore, now it's the interaction that is missing between associates and between customers. And, and then you can engage in this continuous cycle of improvement, and really work on, on providing the best possible customer experience. Taking the technology we do have, we apply at airports, we can really move into the stores, we can provide insights in the store, in-store analytics. Everybody's talking about that, but we, we can really do it. We have projects up and running. We have channel partners, they have deployed several hundred sensors across an entire supermarket to find out um, which paths people take, um, where do they spend time, and that's in insights we can provide to the, to the customers with the technology. What you're offering uh, to partners and customers? Especially during the pandemic, we've seen record demand for our technology to, to deploy Xovis sensors in basically no time, but basically everywhere where people flow is interesting because you need to measure occupancy now, you need to understand uh, whether people keep their physical distance to actually stay safe in those times. And we've recognized that, uh, especially for our partners to roll out the technology in this quick amount of time, we need to help them to, to plan the system, to be able to install the system, to get the sensors in no time, and to be able 
to use it as easy as possible. It's high technology, but in the end, we want to make it easy to use. So that's why we decided to, to invest in cloud technology that basically enhances our sensor technology and the software that we currently have to make it easy for partners to deploy Xovis sensors. And Xovis Flow is basically an easy to use dashboard that's also provided in the cloud to get the most important KPIs out of the sensor. So how many visitors do I have? Uh, what's the gender uh, of my visitors? Um, what's the utilization of, of my store or of my office? Um, to, to enable partners that don't have deep software competences, for example, or that don't care about in-store analytics, but want to deploy service technology for those easy use cases to basically have a turnkey offering that we provide to them. All the processing is done on the device itself. So no video needs to leave the device. Um, it's actually, there is no video feed, which is, which is uh, possible to get out of the, of, the, of the device. It's only X and Y coordinates of people or counts or the processed data, let's say like that. So there is, we don't need the video, it's only the algorithms, they need, they need the video, and that is happening on the device itself. So nobody can actually go and see what's, what's going on underneath the device, except the movement and the KPIs you want to generate. In some markets, they ask for video. They say, oh, you have a camera, just send it out. And we said, no, we don't do that, because it destroys the, 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 the character of the product. And for us as a company, it's the DNA, the whole day, the privacy. It's really important. As I said, it was one reason why we founded the company. And, and that's why we have such a big focus on, on the data privacy itself. Um, and I guess that's something we transport as well to, to, the, to the clients, um, that we, we live that and, and we are really uh, aware of that.